Today is the last topic for acids and bases. Titrations. And titrations is actually bringing everything that we've talked about together. And we'll be doing a lab over titrations, hopefully next week, if not next week, the week right after we get back from break, because I'm trying to get my hands on some technology. And we'll use this apparatus that we have here as part of the lab. And I want to use that today to help describe what a titration is. The first sheet that I gave you, titration and pH curves. An acid-based titration is a procedure that's used where a base of a known concentration is added to an acid of an unknown or vice versa in order to determine the concentration of the unknown. So typically, um, I remember when I was at Butler doing my freshman year in chemistry, we probably did five or six titration labs. Um, so it's used to help find out a lot of really neat stuff. And it's, it's a common practice that's used in industry. So that's one reason why I want to do a lab over that. Um, in addition, it's possible to determine the Ka of a strong acid being titrated, or I'm sorry, not of a strong, but of an acid being titrated, or Kb for the base, as well as the appropriate indicator, uh, chemical that changes color and that's used to mark the end point of a titration, and I'll talk about that right before we do our lab. For the AP exam, you should know how you should know about titrations from a conceptual level, be able to perform calculations for titrations, and know how to proper properly perform one in a lab, and we'll go over all of those procedures when we do that lab. Um, a new unit, if you wish to use it, and my college professor actually introduced it for about two minutes and then never talked about it again, but in case you were to hear this later on down in the road, uh, it's called a millimole, just means that you have one one thousandth of a mole, and some professors really jump on that, and just love using it to death. I personally don't use it, but when we talk about titrations, that's probably the appropriate time to use it because we're talking about millimeters of the material that we're using. So it's more up to the instructor whether they want you to talk about millimoles or not. And then I've got the breakdown of what a millimole is. Uh, let's see here. Conceptual explanation, there are a few main types of titrations. Uh, strong acid titrated with a strong base. We usually do that in general chemistry just to get everybody to get excited about acids and bases because we only have about a week and a half to talk about it. Uh, weak acid titrated with a strong base, that'll be one of our options for the lab. Or number three, a weak base titrated with a strong acid. And number four, uh, we won't do this with a polyprotic. What's a polyprotic again? Yeah, it has more than one hydrogen. Good, so we won't do that. Um, there's a calculation or an equation here that you may use if you have a strong acid with a strong base, and I won't talk about that equation uh, very much because we won't use it. Um, near the bottom there it says one of the most common titrations of this type is hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. This is a neutralization reaction, and we use it quite a bit to just demonstrate how an acid with a base forms salt and water. I think we may have talked about that as well. Frequently, questions appear on the AP exam that deal with procedures for titrations. So one procedural, one procedural question has appeared more than once um, about cleaning the burette. We'll talk about that again with the lab. So don't worry about that paragraph right now. All right, on the back side, probably one of the most important statements or definitions that you need to know about titrations is the equivalence point, okay? We know that we're at the equivalence point when we have the equal number of moles of acid with base, okay? That's the bottom line. So it says, the definition here says, equivalence point, the point in the titration when enough titrant has been added to react exactly with the substance solution being titrated. In other words, the point at which the acid has completely reacted with or been neutralized by the base. Probably the most important part right here. The moles of the weak acid equal the moles of the strong base. Or the moles of the weak base equal the moles of the strong acid. Probably simpler, moles of acid equal moles of base. And you'll notice that it's moles, not molarity. The reason why it's moles is because we're working with two different liquids here. So we have either a weak acid or weak base in the burette and we'll have our strong in our beaker here, and they're both liquids. Yeah, you get it. 
for what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. There's times where you can do a week with a week, but we're not going to do that. We'll always have at least one strong one in there. And that really does help that when we make our titration curves, which you know nothing about yet, um, if they were a week with a week, you wouldn't see much of a curve, but the, the strong really takes it over the edge. Um, we can graphically represent a titration with the use of pH curves. Now, what I want you to rep or notice, and I'm not real happy with the graphics, especially in the top two boxes, is where's the equivalence point at what pH? Seven. I'm going to tell you right now, that is rare. Okay? The, the equivalence point at a pH of seven is rare. The only time that happens is when you have a strong acid with a strong base and you have equal concentrations of that. Okay? So rarely will the equivalence point be seven. Okay? The equivalence point and neutralization point don't necessarily mean the same thing. Okay? It doesn't mean that the pH is seven. And that's probably the one misleading thing on this graphic that really drives me crazy. And I wish I could do something about that, but probably it's good that it's on there. Um, the bottom two graphics, and again, this won't make a whole lot of sense until we actually do the lab, but when you look at those two bottom graphics, you'll notice that when I titrate a weak acid compared to a strong acid, how it starts at a higher pH. Why do you think a weak acid starts at a higher pH versus a strong acid? The lower pH, I'm sorry, say that again. The more acidic you are, the less the pH you have. Correct. So when we look at a weak acid, it's not capable or able to dissociate as many hydrogens, which causes the solution to become acidic. So when we look at a weak acid, it starts at a higher pH. Okay. And then when we titrate that with a strong base, it doesn't have as far to go to get to the equivalence point. And again, these are all things that we'll look at when we do our lab. And I'll have it, I'll try to get it with at least two different um, acids when we do it. Um, indicators. And indicators is a use or a substance that's used to indicate when you're at your desired pH. And usually we use those indicators to mark the equivalence point, if we can. Now the bad news is the, the indicators have such a range. In other words, it could be a, a difference of two pH values. So really it's not a real good, it's a nice visual, but it's not something that you want to use as a benchmark, okay? So back before we had all the technology that we have now, we're going to be able to nail what the equivalence point is once we do our lab. It'll be really nice. But back when, if you were old like me, we needed indicators to get close to when we're going to hit our equivalence point. All right, so that's all concepts there. Look at the second sheet. Are we on day 93? Holy cow. Um, an equivalence problem. And look at the back side. Look at that. Are we on the first one? We're on the what one? We're on part two. Yeah. Okay. Practice problem number one, and again, similar to a past AP exam question, like all of these. Uh, we have aniline, which is C6H5NH2, and is aniline an acid or a base? How do you know it's a base? It says it. <laughs> and we also produce OH, we have a KB value, so there's a lot of things there. Um, a says write the equivalent or the equilibrium expression for the KB. Don't know it yet, that's good. But it just wants you to write the expression. So A. And notice that all these questions want us to write the expression first, which is good. So we have our, and you know what? I did have one person on the quizzes, and I don't think it was in this class, put water in the expression. That surprised me. I'm really surprised at this point in the game, but Somebody's still putting water in there. But you guys are wise enough to know better, right? All right, so there's part A. Part B says, a sample of the aniline is dissolved in water to produce 25 milliliters of a 0.1 mole solution. Okay, so we're actually creating this. And you'll have a, I think I'll give you an opportunity to do that. We'll see. Um, so we have 25 milliliters of a 0.1 mole solution. It says the pH of the solution is 8.82. Calculate the equilibrium constant KB for this reaction. Okay. 
So let's see here. Probably not a bad idea to make an ice chart. Um, make it small. You don't really want it too big here. Do you want it in the B line or the A line still? It's your call. If you're going to make the ice chart, make it small over here. Is that what you're saying? We're on part B right now. Is okay, that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we know we have how much initially of the aniline? 10 Point molar or point one? Right? And then how much of these do I have initially? Zero. Good. Doesn't say anything about it. However, we are given what at equilibrium or at, equi or at equilibrium? pH, good. So we have a pH that is equal to 8.82. So what will that help us find or get? The pOH, so probably a good idea is to find the pOH, which is 14 minus that. And let's see, it's 5.18. Am I close? or what? And then we can find the hydroxide concentration, which is also equal to what? X, very good. So we'll take the anti-log So 6.6, 06, um, times 10 to the negative 6, oh, 6 is in there. Okay, so there's your x, so 6.6, and now since we know, oops, since we know what x is, let's subtract it by that. So there, again, if you needed to do that, you didn't necessarily have to do that. But now we can plug that into our ice chart. So we have KB is equal to 6.606. Square that. 0.1 minus 606. So 4.37, anybody get that? That's 10 negative 10. Okay, so there's your KB. And we'll probably need that. Okay. All right, part C says a solution is prepared in part B and titrated with 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. And ACL is what again? Strong acid, good. So there's our strong with our weak base, which is good. Uh, calculate the pH of the solution when five milliliters of the acid has been added. All right, I'm gonna slide this over, hope not burn any things. All right, hopefully you noticed that you were given a volume along with the molarity, okay? So whenever we have a volume with a molarity, we want to find out the number of moles. Again, we're looking to see if we're at the equivalence point. Whenever you do a titration, you're always wondering, are we at the equivalence point? Okay. And how do you know you're at the equivalence point, mathematically speaking? Very good. We have moles of our acid equal the moles of our base. Moles of acid equal moles of base. Okay. So if we know the volume and the molarity, especially for our acid here, we have five milliliters. If you know the volume and the molarity, always start with the volume. Convert the milliliters to liters. 
And then if we stopped right there, that would be how many liters, and we have a 0.1 molar HCL. So that would give us, I'd love to do that in my head. I think it's five or three zeros. Yeah. So 5.0 times 10 to negative four moles. Okay. Now, the HCl obviously is a strong acid. So the only thing that we really care about is the hydrogen. So that actually is moles of hydrogen. Okay. Now, do we know how much of the aniline we have? Yeah. For if you go back to part B, it says that we have 25 milliliters of a, and I apologize for this, having the same concentration. Not very nice. I'm going to abbreviate this as base. Well, hey, Amber. Okay, so. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. I'm just going to put a, the base. Okay, so looking at this right here, are we at our equivalence point? No. Okay. And oftentimes the question will do that. In other words, as we start to add the material, you want to find out what the pH is as we go. And what's really neat with the software that we're going to use, we're actually going to be able to track what the pH is as we add each drop of our strong acid or, or weak acid or weak base to our substance here. Okay. So it wants us to calculate the pH of this. So we have our mole amounts. Okay. How can I get these to molarity? Because again, we want to put all this back into another ice chart. So we have moles of our hydrogen, moles of our base, but how can I get that back to molarity? What is molarity? What are the units for molarity? Moles over liters. So what's my total volume? What's my total volume here? 30 milliliters. So we can't say that we have the same concentration. In other words, both of these will not be 0.1 molar, okay? Because we're adding a liquid to a liquid. Whenever you add two liquids together, that changes. So our concentration now is going to be this divided by our 30 milliliters. Okay, well, we need to convert that to liters. And then we'll do that to this as well. Okay, so that'll give us our concentration for our base. And let's see here. I've already got that in the calculator. So 8.33 times 10 to the negative 2. Probably we'll go like this. 0833. Anybody else get that for the second one? And then 0 0.0167. Okay, so there's our concentrations for our acid and our base. So when we look at our ice chart, okay, even though this is the way our ice chart was with our base, can we use that same ice chart for our titration? No, don't think about it. Because we're adding a strong acid, just like in the quiz yesterday. Once you add that strong acid, we have to make sure that we have hydrogen on the product side. Okay? So hydrogen's being produced here. So when we look at our things here, the aniline and our conjugate acid, who's going to go with the hydrogen? Is it going to be the aniline or our conjugate acid? It would be the aniline. So we'll have our, C, whoop, our C6, H5, NH, whoops, NH2. And then on the other side, we'll have our C6, H5, NH3 with the plus one charge. 
Okay. So we know what our concentration for this is and what this is. So we can put that in. So we have our point 0.0167 and point 0 0.0833. Okay. And then we said that this was approximately zero, and that's fine. It was a small amount. Now, whenever we add a strong acid to a weak base, again, just like what we did in the quiz, which of these two is smaller? Which of these two is smaller? Yeah, the hydrogen. So this is what X is. So we're going to subtract that on both sides okay, and add it to that side. So this goes to approximately zero, and then this goes to 0.0833. So 6.6, .6, let's say repeating, times 10 to negative 2, and then this is obviously 0.167. So now that we have our concentrations for this, we can find out what our pH is by using our ice chart or using the expression that we have here. So we need to write a new expression, don't we? Yes. <laughs> so how am I going to write that? Okay, so we're going to have hydrogen on top. H5 and H2, and that's going to be over C6 H5 and H3 plus. And then plug those values in. Well, we actually need a value here for Ka, so let's do that over here. So 1.00 times 10 to negative 14 divided by found it at 4.37 and get a 10. So 2.29 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. So there's your Ka. I'm going to need another board. So we've got our concentrations here. So we've got, let's see, um, we're looking for the hydrogen. I'm gonna scoot this over. And we're running out of room here. So Ka, and we'll plug our values in. So we have hydrogen, we have our C6, So a lot of this is repeat stuff. I apologize by the excitement level here. Okay, this is the new part right here. Uh, so let's see, we still got that in our calculator. So 5.79 times 10 to the negative five. What, did I not type it's it right? supposed to be 0, 1, 6, 7. Yeah, the bottom one. Of course, thank you. You guys do that on your quiz too, don't you? What's that? looks more like a 9. Your eyes are playing tricks on you. Okay, so 5.79 times 10 to negative 6 equals your hydrogen concentration. Woo! So pH is equal to negative log of
Go ahead. Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> Are we over here? Right here? 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 Okay. Right, because it's times 10 to negative 6. Yeah. Because what we're doing it. Eh. Where do you see that? Is that this value? That would be this guy over here. But since that, it actually was reduced down further. Yeah. All right, so really with the titration, we get to have a little more fun, okay? And there's, there's a couple ways that you can work these out, okay? Um, and I've seen, we're done with that part. <laughs> we haven't flipped it over yet. I've seen and I've actually worked it out in the past where you find out how many moles you have, okay, just like this. And then whichever of these two is smaller, we're going to subtract that out. But that's essentially what we're doing with our ice chart here. Um, but probably one of the most important things to realize is that when we look at our moles, they are not necessarily the same as the molarity. Okay. Rarely will they have the same values. And then we have to add up the total volume here because we're adding two liquids together. That's huge. So once you have your molarities, then set up your new ice chart. Okay, got to set up a new ice chart because typically what we'll do is we'll set up our very first ice chart as a weak whatever, and then we're going to add an opposite strong to it. So you're right, this will give you great practice to learn how to write two different types of ice charts. Okay. All right, so um, we went, or actually when we looked at our titration, actually I'm going to kind of do a mock curve here, pH is a little along here and then well, as we add more stuff, what was our very first initial pH, does anybody remember? 8.82, good. So we started off up here, uh, yeah. we'll say that that's the 8.82. So we were adding stuff to it, and then after we added, say, five milliliters of our strong acid, what did the pH go to? 5.24, so 5.24. So it started eh, kind of dropping a little bit. Probably not a, since it's a week. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out what the pH is at the equivalence point. And I'm gonna leave I'm going to write a couple things down here before I go away, and I can edit this out on the video. So we have start pH. This is our 5 mils of HCl. Our Ka is 2.29. We don't want to rewrite that again. Or calculate that. Our Kb, was, we calculated that at 4.37. Okay. So there's a lot of information that we're going to get to reuse. All right, let me erase this. And when you look at this question, the next part, part D, look at how little that question is and how innocent it is. It says calculate the pH at the equivalence point. Wow. A lot of you are just going to go, what? Well, here's the thing. Remember, the equivalence point is when we have the moles of acid is equal to the moles of the base. And what I just love is I just erased how many moles of the base I have. Somebody tell me from what we did. Moles of base. Moles of base. 2.1? Whoa, 2.5. Negative 3? Okay, so that's moles of our base. Moles. <laughs> what? Moles is pH. 
Oh, coal. Okay. So this is our moles of our base. So how many moles of acid do you think we need? Very good. So we're going to need for our hydrochloric or for our hydrogen, we're going to need 2.5 times 10 to the 3 moles of hydrogen. Now, yeah. Well, again, when we go back to, we have to figure out how many moles we have first. I got that. And then, we have to equal the base and not the acid? Well, the weak, we're adding the acid to the base. Okay. So, so we know how much of the base we have because we have 25 milliliters of the 0.1 molar. That's what we have in our beaker. Okay. And now we're adding our strong acid to titrate it out. So one of these is being added, and based on our lovely titration curve that we have so far here, it started out as a weak base because we have a pH that's in the 8.8 .8 range, and we're adding that strong acid. Now, we need to find out what volume of this stuff we have, okay? So I need to, my question here is, what is my volume needed to reach the equivalence point? reach or get to this, okay? So how am I going to do that? What is the concentration of my, my strong acid? Right, so our hydrochloric in our thing is 0.1 molar, okay? Or probably better, mole per liter. So we know we have a mole and we have a molarity, and I need to get a volume out of this. So what am I going to start with? to get a volume. Start with your moles. So I'm going to go 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. And I need to use my molarity to get my volume. So how am I going to, am I just going to write 0.1 mole over liter? Well, I'll give you a hint. We need to have the unit mole down here, right? And we need to have liter up here, right? So what goes down here? To point one. Okay. Now, we know that that's one on top because that's per mole. What we really need is milliliters. Okay. So this will tell us how many milliliters of the hydrochloric acid we need <coughs> to add to it. And you'll do this similar type of calculation when you do your lab too. So you'll go, oh yeah, I can go really quickly or I can sit here and watch it drop by drop. And some of you may enjoy that, but run out of time. So, 25 milliliters. Okay. Now, hopefully some of you are going, boy, that was simple. Why? What's that? It's the same. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that we will never use 0.1 and 0.1 ever again. But it's a nice check. So 25 milliliters because the same concentration, 0.1 and 0.1. So knowing that, we now have our hydrogen concentration. Our hydrogen concentration needs to be recalculated. We have our 2.5 times 10 to negative 3 moles divided by what? Our new hydrogen concentration. What is it? 25? No, multiply it by. Don't multiply it. Don't divide it by. Here, I'll give you a hint. Plus. Add it to what? In other words, I want my number of moles divided by the total volume. Oh, 50. Yeah, 50 milliliters. Very good. Because I have 50, or I have 25 milliliters of my acid and 25 milliliters of my base. So I have to find out what the new molarity is. Okay, so then liter. So I get, wait a minute, negative three. Wait, what are you trying to find? The new concentration. The molarity? Uh-huh. So 0 0.05. That's my hydrogen, right? Okay. And so now my base, 
or my aniline. How many moles do I have of my base? 2.5 because we're at our equivalence point. milliliters. And again, total volume is 50 milliliters. So I get 0 0.05 molarity. And you do want to show this. Okay. So we'll plug it back into the ice chart that I just erased. Perfect. So we'll have our aniline. Oops. So C6H5 and H2. You're using the same one, but you're putting your information in it. So yeah, we're making another one. Oops, that's the three. But this one's a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> Approximately zero. Okay. Because what we're doing at our equivalence point, we're actually starting with just our base and we're just adding our acid. So it's approximately zero. It's a very small amount. And then we add these guys in. Seriously, this is what happens. Which of these two is smaller? The one that good. Why? <laughs> It's a joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> if they were the same, it doesn't matter which one you would use. If they are the same, it doesn't matter. But I won't know which one you picked. <laughs> Alright, so now we have a small amount of this, which we don't care about, but we do care about the hydrogen. So when we plug it back into our ice chart that I erased. Okay. No, it's the same one, same one. So we already have it written, so we're gonna have Essentially, we're looking for hydrogen here in this. Um, and whatever that is. So how do we go about plugging those values in? Is it safe to say it's X? Maybe you want to use Y. Okay. <laughs> you guys are good. I like this. And what was our K? 2.29 times, times 10 to negative 5. Was that right? Okay, so we're going to bring that up. Is it doesn't matter what variable you use. So 1.15 times 10 to the negative 6. So y is the square root of that. And I'm just using y because it's different. So one point. Wow, I'm running out of room. Negative four. So y is equal to 1.07 times 10 to negative 3, which, is, which represents what that we care about. Very good. So it represents the hydrogen. So then we can find our pH, taking the negative log of that. Isn't this fun? So your pH is 2.97. So when we go back to our cool little graphic, so the pH starts to drop. And then it drops really far till we get to our equivalence point at 2.97. And then if we put too much hydrogen in there, it really bottoms out. Okay. And that's how our pH curve would look if we put a weak base with a strong acid here. Okay. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> In the problems that we did before, in the problems that we did before, we actually had our either our acid or our base or whatever it was in solution, and then we 
put a solid in. And I always said something along the lines that ignore the volume change, we're going to assume that it's going to remain the same. Volume change is negligible. Negligible. So we were adding a solid to a liquid. In this case, with our titrations, we're adding a liquid to a liquid. So we really care about the volume because it will change because we're adding those two volumes. And that's the fun slash beauty of titrations. All right, now, the last question that's on here. When we look at our values here, okay, and decide to pick an indicator, we usually want to try to find an indicator that is within that pH range. And even though it says the pKa, okay, we actually could use our concentration that we found for our hydrogen, whatever it was back there. So if you take the negative log of that Ka value, it'll give us our pH. Okay. So what would be the best indicator? The first one, second one, or third one? I'm not going to ask you to pronounce those. First one. The first one. <laughs> the one that has a, P, a pKa of three. That would be a, a good one to use. We would not want to use the litmus, which is seven, because it would start to appear, whatever color that is, way up here before we even have a chance to get a few drops in. 